Hello, welcome to my channel, Doll Talks My Shot Lady. In this video, I'm going to be taking up the topic of group discussions. And I want to talk about first the nature and purpose of group discussions. And I will also touch upon the different kinds of group discussions that you might come across. So going to the first point, when I'm talking about the nature of group discussions, first I'm going to be talking about the difficulty level of group discussions as compared to other speech activities like an elocution, extempore or a debate. I've marked it at a difficulty level of 4 out of 5, which means it is pretty difficult to talk in group discussions. Now I want to give you reasons why I have marked it at a 4 out of 5. First of all, you will be given the topic on the spot and you might be getting anything between 3 to 10 minutes to prepare before you have to start participating in the discussion. The second reason why I call a group discussion as a difficult speech activity is because of the cognition type, which means the way in which your brain processes the information that you're going to be speaking about. So, unlike in other speech activities, you have to think of your points pretty much on the spot, frame your sentences and then speak aloud. So it does not give you the luxury of writing down your sentences, memorizing them and then talking about it. Hence, I call it on the go. And these are the two aspects which make the difficulty level really high for group discussions. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the structure of a group discussion. Now, if you look at the image on the screen, you will realize that a group discussion is very similar to that of a weighing scale. And in a group discussion, you're actually supposed to weigh both the pros and the cons of a topic, and then you can come down to some sort of a conclusion. In fact, if you want to appear as a well-balanced and unbiased person to the panel, you should be talking on both sides of the topic. And that is the beauty of a group discussion, that it allows you to approach a topic from 360 degree, unlike a debate where you're forced to take sides. Coming to the last part, which is the purpose of a group discussion, now, the primary purpose of a group discussion is to place you in a group and see how you interact in the group, how you gel with the group. In short, it looks at your group dynamics because every company wants to select a person who will gel well within the company teams. There is also a secondary purpose to group discussions and that is to use it as a selection or a filtering tool. So when a company comes to select you, a lot of you might be having similar academic scores. So they are interested in selecting the smartest of you with the best group dynamics. And this they do by placing you in different groups and seeing how you interact. And on the basis of your interaction, they will make their final decision. So next, I'm going to be talking about what does a GD gauge? What is it exactly a panel is looking for in you? Now, the first one I've already mentioned is that it looks at your interaction in teams. The second one is it looks at your communication skills. Now, communication skills is more than just talking very impressively. It talks about the fact that in a group discussion, you're supposed to listen, pay attention, understand what others are saying and then speak or put forward your point. So we must pay attention to the first two things, that is listen, think, and then speak. The third thing a GD gauges is how logical a person you are. It is not enough to make sweeping statements in a group discussion. You should be able to support your statement with some sort of concrete evidence in terms of facts or figures and things like that. The fourth thing a GD gauges is your leadership skills. Now, a leader is interested not only in doing well for himself or herself, 
but he's also very concerned about the overall performance of the team. And there are many ways in which you can display leadership skills in a group discussion. I will be taking up this topic in one of the other videos. Moving on to the next thing that a GD gauges is your assertiveness. Now, being assertive does not mean you raise your voice. Your assertiveness comes from two things. It comes from the fact that if you're well-read, then what you say will be well-informed. And if you're well-informed, then confidence automatically comes from what you say. And these are the two things that make you sound assertive. The next thing is a GD wants you to be flexible which means in case somebody makes a point which is completely contrary to yours and yet it makes more sense, then you should be graceful enough to accept that the other's point is more valid than yours and this is known as showing flexibility in a group discussion. The next thing a GD gauges is your creativity. Now in the past, most of the topics that were used were factual in nature but companies have realized that most students come very well prepared for factual topics. So it is difficult to select the best of the ones who are sitting for the GD. Hence, these days they have started making group discussions a little more challenging by giving abstract topics. Now, abstract topics are nothing but nonsense topics. And what the panel expects you to do is speak or make sense out of nonsense. And in order to make some sense out of nonsense, you really need to have a lot of creativity and also you need to be quick thinking because you will not have a lot of time to prepare something interesting to say. Next, I'm going to be moving to what are the different types of JD that you might be coming across. Now, the first one is a factual topic. In this, you will be given topics which can be researched, the evidence is there all around you and it is based on facts that you can prove or disprove. So here is an example, how can India battle brain drain? And I want to draw your attention to the fact that this topic ends with a question mark, which means that the panel wants you to provide some answers to this problem of brain drain. What can India do, first of all, to put a stoppage to the smart intellectual people leaving our country? And also, what can be done to get back the people who have already left the country? The second example is blended learning beats traditional classrooms. Again, I want you to note that this one ends with an exclamation mark as opposed to the question mark in the previous topic which means that this is a statement. So anytime you're given a statement in a group discussion, you're either supposed to agree with the statement or disagree with the statement. And understand that you are supposed to speak on both sides of a topic. So you need to talk about the good points of blended learning, the negatives of blended learning, you need to compare it to traditional classrooms, and then you need to come down to some sort of a decision and declare whether the statement makes sense or it does not. Moving on to the second kind of GD, which is a controversial GD. Controversial topics are actually a subset of factual topics, which means that all controversial topics are factual in nature, but all factual topics are not controversial in nature. So here is an example for you. India is a secular country in name only. You know, if given a choice, maybe the government of this country is heading towards a very pro-Hindu country, yet they are sitting on the fence and they still call the country a secular country. Now, this is the kind of topic that will generate different kinds of opinion. There is a possibility of conflict of opinion, and this is what makes a controversial topic uh, more interesting to talk on as compared to factual topics. Another example, again, this is a topic which will incite personal feelings uh, amongst the speakers in the group. Uh, here, it says that God is a human construct. 
Now in India, most of us are very religious in nature. We are God-fearing people. So the idea of questioning the existence of God in itself is blasphemy for most of us. So when you get a topic like this, personal feelings come into it and there's a lot of dissenting point of views and a lot of controversy. So in fact, I personally like controversial topics a lot more than factual topics. So the third kind of topic is the abstract topic. And as I already mentioned earlier, an abstract topic is mostly nonsense and you are required to make some sense uh, of the nonsense topic. Here is an example for you. Horses cry and pigs fly. You will note that this topic still makes some sense and hence it's a semi-abstract topic. Now, when you talk on abstract topics, you will stand to benefit if you take it in the form of a metaphor. So when I see a topic like this, it reminds me of India and its situation. Here, horses, I take them as useful animals, uh, which provide a lot of work for human beings and help human beings. Whereas pigs are pretty much stupid animals without much use, except for the meat that they can provide. So if I put it as a metaphor for India, I can say that in India, useless people are sitting at the top positions and running the country. For example, we have the politicians, you know, they might be jailbirds and still they are sitting and ruling the roost. Whereas useful, skillful people like the horses, they get nowhere in India and they are in very, very poorly paid jobs. Looking at the next topic, colorless green ideas. Now, this is an example of a very, very abstract topic. First of all, it's an oxymoron, which means that there are two ideas which are exactly opposite to each other and yet they have been put together. Something cannot be green and colorless at the same time. So my student, he gave me a very good example of how he interpreted this topic. He said that all ideas which sound great in theory but are useless in practice can be compared to colorless green ideas. Moving on to the next kind of GD, which is a case-based GD. Now, whenever you get a case-based GD, you will be given a printed sheet of paper with a case background. There will be some problem which you're supposed to solve in the group discussion. So here is an example of a case-based GD. It is called the Lifeboat Survivors. Now, affluent, world-famous passengers are on a small, luxurious cruise liner. You know, they're sailing in the Pacific Ocean when a storm blows in. The ship capsizes and most of the people are thrown into the cold waters. Around 14 passengers, including the captain of the ship, they drift off and they are lucky enough to cluster around a small lifeboat. Now, here is the problem. The lifeboat can support only five people. So you... As a group, you have to discuss and decide out of the 14 passengers, which five passengers are the most deserving to get a seat on the lifeboat. So here is an example at the bottom of the list of passengers. I have given only two examples, but it is sufficient for you to understand. Here we have a 70-year-old Olympic gold medalist. And on the other hand, you have a 35-year-old well-known Hollywood actress. And on top of that, she is pregnant. So you will see that it is really a difficult decision to shorten the list of 14 passengers down to 5 passengers. Next, we are moving on to the last type of GD, which is the role play GD. Now, here is an example of a role play GD. New president offers amnesty. Amnesty is a royal pardon that can be given to any criminal by the highest authority of a country. In the case of India, it is the president. Now explain how a new president has been elected and as a gesture of goodwill wants to release some prisoners. Now this is a make-believe situation, but I'll just go ahead. She has called a meeting of her advisors. In this case, you people, your group who's doing the group discussion are the advisors. 
and for the time being you have to put yourself in the shoes of the advisor and this is where the role play comes in you're supposed to decide which prisoner should be released the president has provided each group of advisors with a list of potential prisoners she wants her advisors to recommend one prisoner who should be released from the jail so uh, here at the bottom you see i have given an example or a little background about one of the prisoners uh, in the same way there is a list of other prisoners uh, you are supposed to behave like the president's advisory committee you're supposed to look at each and every prisoner and then you're supposed to shortlist it down to one prisoner who should be given amnesty with that i come to the end of this video for more videos on how to start a GED and how to handle a GED, please uh, refer to the description box below. The name of my channel is Toll Talks from a Short Lady. And with that, I will say thank you and bye.